Welcome to SAP S4 HANA MM training. If you are looking for what is ERP, what is SAP, what is S4 HANA or what is MM, then this video is for you. First we'll see who can learn SAP MM. Anyone can learn SAP MM and no previous knowledge is needed for this course. You will learn everything from scratch. No matter what is, is your qualification, no matter what is your background, you will be learning everything from scratch in this course. Not only the configuration part, but you will also understand material management from the business point of view with different real world scenarios. The only expectation from you is your desire, your commitment and your passion to learn. Some more information about this training. This is an e-learning video based training. This is a complete SAP consultant level course. So what that means is after completing this course, you should be able to apply for jobs for the SAP consultant level uh, in MM. Uh, it can be in support, in can, it can be in project from junior to mid level uh, of the jobs. This course also covers the complete syllabus prescribed for the latest S4 HANA sourcing and, and procurement certification exam. First few of the videos are all about learning the front end, that is the end user stuff. And then the remaining videos, you will be learning about what is customizing and what are the different business processes in MM. Um, a lot of times user get confused that why I'm learning the front end or the end user stuff because unless until you learn what how the end users are using the front end you can't learn what is the customizing and how to customizing the at the back end so it's, it is very very important to learn the front end which is the end user stuff and then go to the customizing part first of all we'll see what is erp you might have heard a lot of times that sap is an erp solution then what is erp ERP stands for Enterprise Resource Planning. It's a type of the central software that helps organization manage and integrate their core business processes in one place. For example, a company can be using different models. For example, they're using finance, they're using production planning, they're using sales, distribution, supply chain, material management, etc. So everything will be in the same in the one software and that software is called ERP. So ERP, you can think like an umbrella that consists of different, different uh, uh, software available from the different brands. For example, think about a smartphone. So if you need to buy a smartphone, smartphone is like ERP, but when you go and buy a smartphone, you can buy iPhone, you can buy Samsung and there's so many. So that is what ERP is. There's so many SAP ERP systems in the market. So of course, one of them is SAP, which is number one in the market. Then there are others, for example, Odo ERP, Microsoft Dynamic, Infor, Sage, Oracle, and there are many other small softwares. Now we'll learn what is SAP S4 HANA. We'll see some theory and history first, and then we'll go into more depth later on. So let us understand what is SAP S4 HANA. S4 HANA is SAP's next generation ERP system designed to streamline and integrate business processes using the in-memory SAP HANA database. S4 HANA leverages HANA's high-speed data processing and simplified data model to enable real-time analytics, faster transactions, and a modern user experience. It was launched in 2015. It is built to support digital transformation, cloud, on-premise or hybrid deployments and is optimized for different industries, for example, manufacturing, retail, pharmaceutical, automobile, and there are so many. Now we'll learn about what are the different modules in SAP S4 HANA. Now, you can categorize the modules in two categories. One is technical, one is functional. In this video, I'm only talking about the functional, but there are some technical modules where you need some um, IT background. For example, 
uh, ABAP, which is the programming side of it. Then there's BISIS, which is um, uh, the maintenance side of it. And there are others like BTP and all that. They are the new technical modules in the market. But here we only talk about the functional modules in SAP. So uh, ST, sales and distribution. We have material management, financial accounting, controlling, production planning, quality management, plant maintenance, project systems, transportation management, etc. There are many others. And in this course, we're only learning about MM. Now we'll learn some history about SAP and SAP S4 HANA. Now quickly, I'll give you some background if you don't know about this, that SAP was first launched in 1972 and they called it R version R1. Like at the moment we have S4 HANA, before S4 HANA we had ECC, but the first one, the very first one was R1 in 1972. So it was a first SAP version and it called one tier system and it was just a basic system and it can run on any database. Then in 1979, they launched with the second version, which is known as R2. So R2 is for two tier system. It was a bit slow. Uh, it was a mainframe system and it was able to run on any database. And it was not a very, very good interface as well. Then they launched R3 in 1992, uh, which was a better than the previous one. It was also known as three tier system. It was a GUI interface. What is GUI? Also known as some people calling it GUI. Our talk in the next video. Um, it was good speed. Uh, they also launched IDOC and ALE. What is IDOC ALE? We'll learn later on. And it was able to run on any database. Then, and it was also, they also launched the industry specific solutions. Then they launched ECC in 2004. It was also a three tier system. Uh, they also launched some other um, uh, modules, for example, CRM, SRM, APO, and they also launched Oops a uh, It was a web-based interface. Interface. And in 2011, they launched HANA HANA database. I'm not talking about S4 HANA. I'm talking about the database only in 2012, 11. Sorry. So it was a database only, and in-memory platform, and it was very high speed and in good in performance. And finally, in 2015, they launched S4 HANA MM. That was where the ABAP was recoded and the data model simplified and it was running on HANA, HANA database. So, and also they launched the Fury apps, which we'll talk in more details in the next videos and data foot footprint reduction. And also they launched new functionality like MRP Live and also it, it is able to do the calculation on the fly. So this is the history of um, S4 HANA. Um, and after 2015, they launched a new version almost every year, like 2016, 17, 18, there were some gaps, but since then they're launching a new version every year. So every new, when, when I say new version, new version means it's just basically uh, the fixing the bugs and also they uh, coming up with the new functionality, new advanced features, but the basic functionality will always remain same. For example, basic functionalities like master data, transaction data, basic customizing, that will always remain same. And it is same since 1990. Now, a lot of newcomers, they are confused between what is ECC, what is S4 HANA? What is the main difference? Now he'll I'll briefly discuss about the difference. In the previous slide, we have seen ECC was the previous version and S4 HANA is the latest version. But let's see, let's compare some, <coughs> um, some details. So if you compare here, you can see SAP ECC that can run on different database, for example, Oracle, IBM, and also HANA but S4 HANA can only run on HANA database, which is a faster database. Then ECC is a trans trans tra traditional SAP system, 
since 2004, whereas S4HANA is the latest version that was launched in 2015. ECC number three ECC data resides in the hard disk, whereas the data resides in the main memory or the RAM and updated in the hard disk. That's, that's why it is very, very fast. Number four, system speed is normal, whereas in S4HANA, very fast processing of the data is, is possible. Number five, end user accesses, end user access the system via the SAP GUI, whereas in uh, S4HANA, uh, end users will be accessing via the Fury apps that we'll see in the next video, but they can also access via the GUI. Number six, ECC is a bit less expensive, whereas S4HANA is more expensive. Number seven, um, ECC is standard transaction and reporting, reporting system, whereas S4 HANA has very, very advanced features and reporting. Now we'll discuss about the different types of data in SAP. Here I'm only talking about overall SAP. I'm not talking about SAP MM. I'll come back to SAP MM at the later part of this video. So overall in SAP, there are different types of data, master data we can maintain. Basically, there are four types of data you can categorize. Number one is master data. Master data, for example, you need to maintain material master, vendor master, customer master, also known as business partner in S4HANA. Output master, where you need to send the output, for example, we need to send an invoice, order confirmation, purchase order confirmation, etc. We need to maintain the pricing. We need to maintain the bills of material. So these different things we'll again learn in more details in the next video, but this is just the master data that is maintained. So why we need master data? I will create another video in more detail why we need master data. But in brief, master data is needed to pull the information when we create a transaction. For example, when I go and create a purchase order, I will just enter the vendor code or the BP code. It will pull up all the details from the master data for that BP. Same, if I enter a material code in the purchase order, it will pull up all the materi material master information from that master data record. If the master data is not there, then I need to type in everything manually to maintain that material details in that purchase order. So we'll discuss in detail later on. Then we have transactional data. We have different transactions are created in the system. For example, if, a, if it's a manufacturing company, uh, they will buy raw material first. So to buy the raw material, they will need to create a purchase order. So purchase order is a transaction. So purchase order is created, we purchase the raw material. Then we use that raw material to manufacture something, some goods. And to manufacture them, we need to create a production order for, that is used in the production planning module. And finally, when the goods are ready, we send them to the customer by creating a sales order. So these are different transactions that are created and there are so many different transactions we'll learn later on. This is just a very high level overview. Then we have customizing data. So we need to customize a system as per the business requirement. What are the different customizing available? This is what we're going, going, we are going to learn in this, uh, in this course. And number four category is report. So we have different types of report. For example, in the screen, you can see there's a billing report. We can have a open purchase order report or a report for all the active vendors, active business partners, or a report for all the finished goods, in the material master. So there can be different, different reports. Again, we'll talk about reports in a separate topic in more details. Now we'll learn what is MM in SAP S4 HANA. This is also known as sourcing and procurement. So what is S4 HANA MM? S4 HANA MM streamlines the logistic processes and supply chain operations through interconnected functionalities providing real-time insights and user-friendly interfaces via the SAP Fury apps. So what that means is MM consists of different sub modules and these sub modules are for example purchasing material requirement planning which is known as mrp invoice verification master data management service procurement inventory manage management etc so we'll learn in more details in the next videos
Now we'll see a high level overview of what how the org structure look like in um, in MM. So org structure is started starting with a client. First a client is set up, a client can have different company code. It can have one company code or it can have multiple company code. Each company code has plant and again there can be one plant, there can be multiple plant and each plant has storage locations. So this is just a very very high level of the org structure. In the next in the in the next videos I will show you how we can customize this org structure in, in the system. Now we'll learn about what is the role of SAP MM consultant. Now there are two types of roles um, or two types of jobs that you can apply in this area. One is called SAP MM support consultant. Support consultant is basically needed for a company they who are using um, SAP system for their day-to-day -day business. So you will be working in the small projects or in the BAU area uh, for that company or you can go for SAP MM consultant level job in projects and implementation for and you can this is for example you can get a job with Accenture, IBM companies where they will send you to the client site with the whole SAP team and you will be a part of the implementation team where where you will be implementing the module from scratch. So let's see what is a job profile in a support consultant role. So support consultant, as I said, you may be working in the end user client. So you'll be attending the day to day issues with the end users, gathering requirements from the users, mapping requirements into SAP and changing SAP configuration if required. <coughs> coordinating with the developer for any enhancements. It may be creating the functional specs and all that. Helping end users with their user acceptance testing. Delivering SAP training to the end users, creating training documents, etc. So these are the few duties, the main responsibility of a support consultant. In the case of um, MM consultant, where you will be working in implementation project, these are the few um, responsibilities. So you'll be going to the client site and gathering the customer requirements, scoping and gap analysis and preparing the blueprints, customizing and delivering the solution as per the business needs, coordinating with the technical team for any enhancements, testing the changes, documenting the process, training end users, and you'll be part of the go live and also post go live support. Thank you very much to watch this video. I will see you in the next video. Have a good day.